Hey there riders, Motogenic Chris here. Let's talk Yamaha's WR250R, a small capacity adventure bike that demands a more premium price and has quite the reputation in the dual sport world. If you want my first road and commuting impression, check out my earlier vid linked top right. However, if you are after a beginner adventure bike which has really strong off-road performance, then this could well be for you. And it's also a favorite of lots of people who are kind of in the know and who are happy with a smaller capacity dual sport. Now on paper, Yamaha's WR250R is well specced in the category, but from a road perspective, it's easy to get caught up on the power figure, getting a bit more serious about your off-roading and adventure riding, which is what the WR250R is aimed at, really moves the goalposts as to what you want in a bike. There's plenty of more powerful and much heavier machines out there. In fact, there's even options like the Versys X300 and G310GS, which are in the same region of motorcycle, but these tend to be much more road orientated out of the box. The collective wisdom of the internet does however suggest that if you're into trails and being more adventurous and want that off-road lean to your bike, the WR250R is one of the best options that doesn't give up too much road viability in the process, with an ideal blend of entry-level ease and potential to grow your skills. The real competition here comes from the CRF250L from Honda and Kawasaki's KLX250S. As a quick overview, there's proper long travel suspension and a tall seat height that can be a challenge for shorter riders. Brakes are simple too, but do an exceptional job with a high revving, low maintenance single cylinder power plant propelling you and the WR250R to freedom. A big aspect of the bike is the weight. At 126 kilos dry, it's not hardcore off-road racer light, but it is significantly lighter than a road bike. And the fuel tank is small at 7.6 litres, but you'll get exceptional mileage out of it, and there are larger tanks available for purchase. Keeping in mind, of course, that when the going gets tough, weight matters. When you drop a bike, weight matters. When you're looking at overall performance, weight matters. And when you think about rocky or rough off-road riding, that weight helps ensure everything works well, from the suspension to the brakes, as well as helping you as a rider reduce the amount of fatigue you're suffering. Now this WI250R came from Yamaha Australia in Tenre 250R guise, which includes a very welcome amount of wind protection plus a larger tank. These combine to massively extend the bike's range and also to ensure highway riding isn't a chore. An adventure bike needs to be able to cruise on the highway and the WI250R will do that easily at 110 or 120 km per hour indicated with some more in the tank and the revs are of course gonna be high. Loping along country roads and through the scenic routes will be no issue and taking the twisties is still fun, although your tire choice will of course come into it. With all that said, the WI250R has a reputation of being a better highway machine than even some of the 450 CC machines in the similar kind of category, which do suffer from more vibes and where different gearing isn't always as ideal for those higher speeds. You're not getting modern 200 kilo plus adventure sports or adventure touring comfort or the mile munching capability with oodles of horsepower, but the trade-off is a lighter and more competent off-road package, which should be kind of obvious here. Realistically speaking, if you're looking at 90% road and 10% unsealed road or fire trail, you may be better off with something else. But if you're thinking 50-50 or even a greater amount of off-road or really proper adventure riding, then the WR250R has a huge amount to offer. And being road legal, you can ride it on the road to get to more interesting places. Or if you want a small capacity dual sport with proper off-roading capability that you can ride to work or uni all week and still get out and explore on the weekend, this might be the bike for you. Doing a two day ride with Ride ADV out of Dural in Sydney took my appreciation of the WR250R to a whole new level and certainly put it through its paces in some more interesting and more varied conditions. Now, Ride ADV run a fleet of WR250Rs, especially set up for their adventure touring rides. And this gives you an idea of just how highly they think of these bikes. In fact, Greg Yeager did tell the guys on the bikes that they'd borrowed from Ride 8 DV at the beginning of the ride, ride them like you stole them. And there's really no more that needs to be said about the level of confidence they have in the bikes when someone's telling you to do that on a bike which they're lending you. Now, we did a fair stint on the highway and back roads to get up to Stockton Beach where the WR250R provided an amazing option for learning sand riding with some great advice from Greg and his crew helping me keep on the right track. 
Sandwriting is obviously a bit specialised, but it really made me appreciate the WR250's weight and easily accessible power, and made for a challenging but incredibly fun experience, especially once I was confident and starting to venture into the softer sand a bit more. This was followed by about a half day through the Wadigans and unsealed roads down to St Albans Pub, which while not anywhere near as challenging as the beach sand riding, particularly in comparison, helped highlight how easy the WR250R is to manage through these sections, with the suspension swallowing up the worst of the inconsistencies with ease and control, allowing the bike to flow through the corners with great confidence. Being so light makes the bike easy to handle, and extended periods standing on the bike was comfortable and helped get more feedback from the WR, while a little gearbox use kept the bike coming along with a nice spread of power. Plenty more than I was making use of, at least, with lots of growing room for these conditions. That power also starts strong down in first gear, with the bike capable of pulling even from a low RPM in high gears, but revolving around that rev happy nature and keeping things on the boil. Now this is all before the highly recommended modifications that so many people go for. There's a thousand dollars you can spend on suspension which will massively overhaul the system and comes highly recommended and there's plenty of other mods as well which are equally recommended from a better exhaust through to modified gearing to make the most of the performance on offer. Now obviously I haven't run the WR250R through some crazy single trails at speed like the professionals but the WR massively impressed me, enough so that I tried to find one second hand for a reasonable price. The thing is though, that these bikes hold their value exceptionally well, and there's just not that many of them going second hand, which really speaks to how well regarded they are. Sadly it does seem like the WR250R's days may be numbered, with Euro 4 and Euro 5 restricting what hits the market, even where they aren't directly applicable, so getting in while the going is good is probably an idea if you really like the idea of one of these bikes. Obviously for those who feel the need to upgrade for more performance, or whose riding needs don't align with what this bike is properly good at, the WR250R might be one to pass over. But for those after an off-road orientated adventure or dual sport bike that's relatively light, offers good power and a great all-round package, it's hard to look past the WR250R, even for a first time rider. Just check that seat height. Now if you've got any questions, let me know, or if you think I've missed anything, don't forget to sub, hit that notification bell, and as always, stay safe out there. Thank you.